While spending the weekend with his father, two-year-old Germain suddenly vanished without a trace. However, 33 years later, his mother discovered the shocking reason behind his disappearance. I can't wait for you to come home, little one, Lynette thought to herself as she was preparing Germain's favorite dish. On that day, everything seemed perfect for a comfortable dinner, yet things would turn out very differently. That day would forever constitute a painful memory for her. It started like any other, bright and cheerful, with birds singing as they flew through the air. Despite how much she enjoyed it, only one thought reigned supreme in her mind, and that was of her son's impending arrival. Germain, her two-year-old son, had gone to spend the weekend with Man, his father. All through the week, it had been all the little boy could talk about, and she was also glad that she finally could find some time for herself. Thankfully, it was a great trip. Man told her that he and Germain had a great time, and the little boy had enjoyed himself immensely. However, she was missing her son already, and she couldn't wait to see him again and hug him tight. Man told her that they were on their way home, so she could set about preparing Germain's favorite meal. She knew just how much he loved it. Slowly, time crept by. She finished preparing the meal, but neither Germain nor Man were back yet. The food began to grow cold, and the sun began to set, but still no trace of Germain and Man. This annoyed her. She didn't like Germain staying outdoors after it got dark. He had to rest properly before he returned to school the next day. She was sure that Germain and his father had gotten carried away with the fun they were having and had forgotten to leave on time. When night fell and they still hadn't returned, Lynette began to panic. She wondered what could possibly delay them. She knew that at such late hours, the traffic could be really terrible, and that could be the reason for their delayed return. She repeated that to console herself, but that consolation only lasted until she tried calling Man and found that his number was switched off. She became terrified then, as she wondered what could possibly have happened. Both of them should have turned up hours ago, but she wasn't getting anything from them. She considered calling the police, but she changed her mind at once. She didn't want to end up making a mistake if Germaine and her father later turned up without any qualms. So Lynette remained in suspense. One eye was on the door and the other was on the wall clock, monitoring the hands as they moved to the hour. With every minute that went by, her panic grew exponentially. She could just feel it in her soul that something was wrong. By the time another hour had gone by, Lynette couldn't hold it in any longer. She knew that she had to do something. Just as she pulled out her phone to call the cops, it began to ring in her hand. It was man. Sadly, he only had terrible news for her. Their son was missing. When he said the words, Lynette almost didn't understand him. For a few seconds, it seemed like Man had spoken a foreign language to her. When he repeated himself, she realized then what he was saying. She was stunned into silence as her mouth fell open in shock. She told him that she refused to believe what he was saying and ordered him to bring Jermaine home at once. The moment she cut the call to him, she called the police and reported everything to them. Not long after, she ran out of her house like a crazed woman. Man had told her where he was, and she went there to meet him. When she saw him, he looked like he'd had his very soul stolen from him. There were dried tears in his eyes, and he kept looking around as if little Germain would pop out of the shrubs, laughing and calling it all a prank. Lynette demanded to know what had happened, and he told her everything. They were on their way back, and while he'd been trying to pay for their bus tickets, Jermaine had wandered off on his own. Man had only taken his eyes off the little kid for a few seconds to deal with the cashier, and that was all it took for Jermaine to vanish. Man told her that he had searched the entire bus park, turning everything upside down. Rooms, offices, and stalls, but it was all for nothing. He even searched the area surrounding the park, but he had no luck on that front either. It was as if their boy had simply vanished into thin air. Lynette felt her knees buckle beneath her, causing her to fall to the ground as she wept profusely. By the time the cops arrived, 
She grabbed one of them by the hand and pleaded with him to help her find her son. Man repeated to the cops the exact thing he told Lynette, and at once a search was launched. Loads of cops and many residents in the area took it up as a form of duty to help Lynette out. They formed teams and they went looking for him far and wide, shouting Jermaine's name and asking him to come home. They covered every inch of the area. No stone was left unturned, yet nothing worked out. At that point, Lynette began to regret allowing Mann access to Germain. Mann was her ex-husband, and she regretted allowing him to remain in the life of their son after how badly he treated her. Lynette and Mann's marriage used to be sweet. At least while they were dating, it had been a romantic one. It was so sweet that she felt as if she was living a romance novel. Mann was just too good to be true, and she loved him more and more every day. However, things changed right after they got married. She began to see his true colors and realized that during their courtship, Mann had only been pretending. Mann was a chronic cheat. He cheated on her so often and with little regard for her feelings. He didn't even care if she found out, and he made only half-hearted attempts to conceal his affair from her. No matter what she said, no matter the conversation she held with him, nothing changed him. At first, she assumed that she was the problem, but when she asked him what she had to do for him to change, he had no response for her. Whenever she reminded him of how much his actions hurt her, he apologized profusely and promised not to do it again. In a few days, however, he was out there cheating on her yet again. Lynette became fed up, and after just two years of marriage, she decided to divorce him. However, before she could begin the proceedings, she found out that she was pregnant. That was the only reason she stayed on. She didn't want her baby to be born outside a marriage, and she also knew that the baby needed the father in his life as well. She also hoped that the presence of the baby would curb his addiction. She was wrong. He cheated on her when she was pregnant with his baby. He cheated on her even after Germain was born. The day he was to take Lynette home from the hospital, he had come late smelling of female perfume. There was even a smudge of lipstick on his neck. Man was just so nonchalant about her feelings, and every time it made her cry. Still, despite everything, she knew one thing for sure. Man loved Germaine. He was a good father to their son, and many nights when taking care of the baby drained her of energy, he had no problem staying up late into the night and rocking the sleeping child. When it came to being a father, he was great. Sadly, the same couldn't be said of him as a husband. He kept cheating on her and having affairs all over the town until things came to a tipping point for her. Lynette decided that she had endured enough. When their married neighbor came to beat Man up, accusing him of having an affair with his wife. This was their next door neighbor, and the fight happened in the yard, where everyone could see and hear them. Lynette had never been more embarrassed. She realized then what she was doing to herself by choosing to stay with such a man. She decided that enough was enough, and she was done with him. She was finally ready for divorce, and she filed for it at once. Man begged her for forgiveness. He promised to change, he swore that he was sick and needed help, and he swore that he would start therapy. He just didn't want her to leave him. However, she refused to even consider it. He then tried another tactic by asking her to stay so Germain wouldn't have to grow up without a father. She knew that no matter what he said, he would never change, so the minute she made up her mind to leave him, nothing could change it. She kept pushing for the divorce until she got it. There was plenty of evidence to help her case, and just about everything she wanted was given to her. However, she didn't contest it when Mann said he wanted visitation rights. She knew that he loved his son and would take care of him, so she was willing for them to be co-parents in his life, just so that Germain would still have a father figure. So he got to spend the weekends with Mann and every other day with Lynette. It was a great arrangement that was working for them. She tried to move on from the pain of her broken marriage and focus on being a mother to her son. She was trying her best to be happy again. Sadly, the happiness vanished the minute Germain didn't return home with his father. She blamed herself for it. 
She knew that if she had contested his visitation rights, Germain would never have been at the park with Man, and as such he would never have gone missing. For that reason alone, she couldn't forgive herself. As the search for Germain went on, days turned into weeks and weeks into months, but nothing ever came forth. Lynette could never get over the disappearance of her only son. She still believed that he was going to return to her, no matter how long it took him. So she left his room as it was. It still had all of Germaine's things in them, and she cleaned the room regularly to prevent dust and cobwebs from ruining their beauty. Every weekend, she washed all his clothes, ironed them, and arranged them neatly in his closet, ready for him to wear. When it was time to eat, she served his own as well. She placed his food at his favorite spot on the table and imagined him eating. At times like this, she couldn't stop the tears that came to her eyes. She imagined what life would have been like if she had never allowed Germain to go with his father, and she kept blaming herself. Every year, on the anniversary of his disappearance, she always woke up feeling sick and feverish. One time she threw up and was rushed to the hospital by her neighbors. Sadly, that was only the first of many, and it only got worse for her. On such days, she went to the bus park where Germaine had disappeared, standing at the spot man said he went missing as she waited for her baby boy to return to her. She stood there for hours on end, muttering to herself and telling herself that if she stood there long enough, he would come back to her. People began to think she was crazy some even going so far as to report her to the city's psychiatric ward. This didn't discourage her though. She kept going each year. She kept on doing whatever she could to keep the memory of her son alive. Even though she was getting increasingly older and weaker, she didn't mind at all. Twenty years after Germaine's disappearance, she went to the park as usual, and while she stood at the spot waiting for him, she passed out from fatigue and tiredness. When she opened her eyes, she found that she was at the hospital. She'd been taken there by a good Samaritan named Lewis. He found her sprawled on the ground, burning up with fever and looking disturbingly pale. Even though he rushed her to the hospital, he refused to leave her side. He was right beside her when she finally woke up. Lewis remained with her at the hospital until she calmed down. It became a habit for him to visit her after work. Even though he was tired, he never let it stop him from paying her a visit and cheering her up. By the time she was ready to be discharged, she had developed a soft spot for him. He had been there for her and she thanked him for taking good care of her. They became good friends, and for the first few years, that was all they were. Lynette knew that Louis was in love with her, but she was scared of falling in love again. She still remembered how things had been in her previous marriage and how it had led to the disappearance of her son. She wasn't sure she had it in her to attempt another relationship. She was still feeling guilty about it all, and love wasn't on her mind at all. However, this didn't change Lewis's disposition. He kept on being a friend to her. He was a shoulder for her to cry on, and he also accompanied her when she went to the park on the anniversary of Germaine's disappearance. One day, five years after they met, Lewis paid her a visit and told her that he was leaving the country for a while. He wanted to go on a trip and see new places. She wished him luck and bade him farewell. However, when he turned to leave, she ran over to him and hugged him. She begged him not to leave her, and she confessed that she really did love him, she just didn't realize it. This confession made him happy. He proposed to her there and then, and she said yes. She was finally ready to try it again. They got married, and it was one of the best decisions she ever made. Lewis loved and took care of her. He didn't try to stop her from remembering her son. Instead, he sided with her, regardless of how everything felt. He knew that was what made her happy, and he was willing for her to have that. For the next couple of years, life was perfect, but everything turned upside down the day Lynette received a jarring phone call. It was shortly before dinner. All the dishes had been laid out, and just as she was about to sit to eat, her phone began to ring. She picked it up and found out that it was the police station calling. They had an urgent message for her. They had found her son. Lynette surged to her feet as she heard this. 
The officer on the other end repeated himself just so she would be certain. After 33 years, they'd finally found her son. At once, she and Lewis rushed over to the police station, and to their shock, Jermaine really was there. He was a full-grown adult now, 35 years old, and the moment he saw Lynette, he told her that they had the same eyes. She hugged him so tight, holding on to him as if leaving him would mean losing him all over again. Tears fell from her eyes as they hugged each other. She thanked her stars for never giving up on him. She had always known that he was out there. She had always believed that he would be back. She was thankful that her prayers had not gone unanswered. Later on, after she managed to calm down, she asked the cops how they'd found him, and they revealed the elaborate plot that shocked her to the bones. It had all been orchestrated by man, her ex-husband. He never forgave her for leaving him, even though his cheating was the main reason. He hated the fact that she'd been able to move on, and he also hated the fact that he could only see his son on weekends. He wanted to hurt Lynette for what she did and make her pay, and the only thing that he could come up with was taking Germaine from her. He knew that he couldn't just take Germaine without Lynette coming for him, so he lied that the little boy had gone missing. He faked everything, and then, not long after, moved to America with Germaine. He forged their documents, including a birth certificate for Germaine and an ID card for himself. There in America, they began to build their lives. To keep him from asking about his mom, Man lied to him that Lynette was dead. He limited the boy's movement and did all he could to prevent him from coming into contact with the authorities. However, recently an event took place in their neighborhood. The mayor wanted to give grants to those who were willing to set up businesses in the communities and boost their economy. However, every applicant underwent thorough scrutiny. Mann applied for it as well and submitted his forged documents. The experts saw through it, and the case was transferred to the police, who investigated and realized that both Mann and his son were not American citizens but Canadian. Working with the Canadian authorities, further investigations were carried out, which revealed that Germaine was indeed the little boy who had gone missing more than three decades ago. Mann had been promptly arrested, while Germaine was taken to the station and everything was revealed to him. He got on the first flight to Canada and went to the police station so they could help him find his mother. As Lynette heard everything Mann had done to her, she couldn't believe her ears. She wept profusely as she realized just how much she had suffered at the hands of her ex-husband. Later on, she thanked the cops for bringing her boy home to her. She told them that she wanted to take him home and cook his favorite meal for him. That was the only thing that had mattered to her for all those years. The last time she had seen him, he was only two years old, but now that he was 33, she realized that nothing had changed. He was still her baby boy, and she was going to be his mother until her very last day. Later on, Mann was sent to prison for his actions, while Germaine relocated to Canada to be closer to his mom. Both of them, along with Lewis, became a family together, and they tried to catch up on all the moments that had been stolen from them. They deserved it, after all. What a beautiful story. Who knew Mann would be so cruel even to his son? What would you have done in Lynette's shoes? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.